So I use interval notation to describe the intervals on which the function is continuous in the case of a composition of a rational and square root and polynomial, we can just find the domain. To find the domain, but since it's a rational function, the denominator is not allowed to be zero, okay? And what that means is that x squared minus nine is not allowed to be zero, because the square root of zero is zero. What else we know is because of the radical, we need x squared minus nine to not be negative either, okay? So if x squared minus nine is not allowed to be zero and it's not allowed to be negative, that means it can only be positive. So what we're going to do is we're gonna find all the x values for which x squared minus nine is positive greater than zero. So what this goes back to is solving what's called a quadratic inequality. And there are a couple of different techniques for solving a quadratic inequality, but they all basically involve having a zero on one side, having standard form, so that's good. We're in good shape there. And then does anyone have any suggestions? How did you think about solving that inequality, finding where that's positive? Okay, you decided to factor, so let's see. If we just factor, that's x minus three, x plus three, we wanna know where is that greater than zero. How do you determine where it's greater than zero then? Finding where it equals zero is a, a step you can use to do what? Then what do you do after that? Plug, okay, plug in values in between, very good. Okay, so the technique that she's using is called a sign chart, and we can set up a sign chart so that on the bottom we have the x values, and on the top we have the result of the product of x minus 3x plus 3. And what she's saying is we want to mark off whatever x values cause that expression to equal 0. And the reason why is we're interested in where it's positive or negative. And so it's on every interval between the zeros, it's either going to be positive or negative. All right, so um, what would cause this to equal zero? Negative three would cause the x plus three term uh, factor rather to be zero, and three would cause the other factor to be zero. Okay, notice I put them in order, negatives to the left. So on the interval from negative infinity to negative three, for example, we could test the value negative four by plugging it into the expression and seeing if we get a positive or a negative. On the interval from negative three to three, zero is a nice, easy number to plug in. On the interval from three to infinity, we could use four, we could use five, whatever. I'm just gonna pick five. X minus three, if you plug in negative four, are you gonna get a positive or a negative? Negative, and then negative four plus three is also negative. Negative times negative is positive, so we know that every result, not just plugging in negative four, but any number we pick on that interval, it would result in a positive value. Okay, plugging in zero, we would get zero minus three is negative, zero plus three is positive, negative times positive is negative. If we plug in five, five minus three is positive, five plus three is positive, positive times positive is positive. So let's answer the question. Built into this is a question. Where is this expression greater than zero is the same as asking where is it positive. Negative infinity till negative three, we have all positives, and from three to positive infinity. Very good. Okay, so that's the sign chart approach, and what we just found is that the domain of G, and I'm going to denote that domain, D-O-M of G, is equal to negative infinity to negative three, union three to infinity, not including the endpoints because it would be zero at those points. Okay, I just wanna mention that x squared minus nine, if you think of it as a graph, what would it look like? It would be a parabola, right? Shifted down nine units. What would the x-intercepts be? Negative three and three, right? And where does it have positive y values? It's negative infinity to negative three, it has positive y values. And three to infinity, it has positive y values. So another way that people solve these is to visualize x squared minus nine and where it would be positive on its graph. So I'm not graphing g, and that's important to acknowledge. What I'm doing is making a visual representation of just this this part that's under the radical, the radicand, x squared minus nine. This has nothing to do with what the graph of g of x looks like, or even the square root of x squared minus nine. This is just to see where the values are positive. And you see, because if I lay that parabola over the sign chart, it just corresponds to what we found here, positive, negative, positive.